Hi, I'm Michael and this is California. And yesterday afternoon, after clinching the American political trifecta, and that is the House, the Senate, and the presidency for Democrats, President-elect Biden finally revealed a high-level overview of his plan to build back better. And like we know from the rhyme, if Biden's plan can, in fact, build back better, even Betty Butter's bitter butter batter will be built back better under the new Biden plan. Now the plan is called the American Rescue Plan and has a very wide spread of resources, support, and innovations to help the American people. It includes obvious things like a third round of stimulus checks for $2,000, an expansion of unemployment benefits to $400 a week, as well as some big systemic changes like a nationwide $15 minimum wage. With its projected $2 trillion price tag, this relief package represents the full price of help that had its $900 billion down payment put down last December. So today we are talking about Joe Biden's American Rescue Plan, some key provisions that will help the hardest hit Americans, and what may be some of the challenges this proposal could face moving forward. Now this is your Daily Dose. And before we get to it, if you like this information, if you find it interesting, if you find it helpful, please, don't forget to like and subscribe. That way you can get updates when our newest and most informative videos become available. So yesterday we got a glimpse at what is President-elect Biden's plan to help the American people and the economy get back on its feet. And needless to say, it is a $2 trillion behemoth that seeks to put America back on track and in some ways fundamentally change how our country works as a whole. These changes are justified now more than ever as we saw first-time unemployment claims climb to 965,000 people in the most recent jobs report on Thursday. In addition to that, there was the loss of 140,000 jobs permanently in December according to the Department of Labor. In the plan, there are short-term temporary changes meant to provide a boost of support to families in need, like a third round of $1,400 stimulus checks that included with the current $600 stimulus checks would equal $2,000 increased tax credits, federal increase of weekly unemployment benefits to $400 a week, rental and eviction protections, as well as a dramatic boost in the national minimum wage to $15, which could really shape the way American companies function for the foreseeable future. Additionally, given the fact that this is a presidential plan and not an actual piece of legislature, by the time it gets through Congress, both the House and Senate, it is likely to have some of these provisions cut or reduced or all around mangled if it ever does actually get back to the president's desk. So let's talk more specifics about what's in the bill. The first and really most urgent portion of the Biden plan is to include a third round of stimulus checks that would pay out $1,400 to eligible Americans. This is basically a carbon copy of what was advocated by Democrats back in December, but got shot down by the Republican Senate. Additionally, under the Biden plan, these checks would also include some of those folks, primarily dependents over the age of 17, and households with mixed immigration statuses who were excluded from the first round of CARES Act stimulus checks, as well as this most recent round of $600 stimulus checks. A second is an expansion and extension of federal unemployment benefits from $300 a week up to $400 a week. Furthermore, it would extend these unemployment benefits out to September instead of mid-March like they are right now. The next one, which seems a bit more dubious in my mind, is an increase in the national minimum wage from $7.25 to $15 an hour. Now, realistically, this is absolutely necessary, for sure. I mean, I had a job in 2003 here in California that paid me minimum wage and it paid me $6.75 an hour. So basically, over the last 20 years, the national minimum wage has only increased over that by $1. So it is definitely needed to be expanded. But an increase like this would likely be a bridge too far for many members of Congress, both Democrats and Republicans. Now, hopefully it passes, but I get the feeling it might be one of those provisions that are just in the proposal to sound good, but also to be given away in the negotiation, just so there are some superficial appearance of a win for Republicans. So this proposal is all well and good, but the big question is, can it actually pass? Yes, it's true. Democrats hold the House, they have the Senate, and they have the presidency, but not by much, and politics is a game of inches. So with such a thin margin of majority, Biden would still need buy-in from not only the folks on the other side of the aisle, but also the more moderate Democrats who are not really in a position to go big on progressive changes. For example, Senator Joe Manchin out of West Virginia, a Democrat, 
has already expressed his discontent with the possibility of a $2,000 stimulus check. And also, if we look at the overall numbers, they are not necessarily in favor of getting such big progressive plans passed either. In the House, Democrats only have a four-seat majority, but three of those seats will be temporarily out as those members of the House move to work in the Biden administration. In the Senate, they only have a one-vote majority, which is the vice president. And in the Senate, they would still need to win over 10 GOP senators to get something of this caliber passed. And unfortunately, not all GOP senators are as reasonable as Susan Collins out of Maine. So the proposals are great, but the reality of politics, as we all got a master class in last year, is that nothing is really done until it's actually done. Looking at this proposal in the broad perspective, I know something like this will pass in the next few months. It may not be as massive as $2 trillion, but it will be big and it will be progressive and it'll be a whole lot better than getting nothing. But the big picture on this is that this proposal is a good thesis to what a Biden presidency will likely look like over the next four years. He isn't a big thinker kind of guy. He isn't going to try to make big progressive leaps forward like an Obama. Rather, he's a guy that is brought in to stabilize this ship and build a straight and level platform for the future presidents to build upon, whether they're Democrat or Republican for that matter. Now, this has been your Daily Dose, and I hope that you found it interesting or helpful or at least useful. And if you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe. That way you can get updates when our newest and most informative videos become available. So that's it for me, and for California, I'm Michael, wishing you a happy, healthy, 